Hey guys and welcome back to Let's Play Encased. We are in Carmine Heights and we are here to get the Maelstrom Beacons. Olivia and Johan Reisner will give them to us hopefully but first we need to do a few things for them. First up, I guess there are more tasks to be done but first up is hanging up some campaign posters on three billboards because Olivia is seriously concerned about the outcome of the upcoming elections so let's start with that right A handwritten notice of a concert, several private advertisements and a poster urging people to vote for Semekis are on the notice board. Read the other announcements. Large poster of a hairy guy with a guitar. On the anniversary of the founding of Carmine Heights, Proton Bombardment will be waiting to play for you. Tickets available on site. And the site is the room of the DOS house. So paste up the Reisner poster. While you work on the poster, your attention is involuntarily drawn to Zemeckis' election campaign. You can of course leave everything as it is, but no one's stopping you from creatively modifying the posters of Reisner's main rival. Zemeckis is... what is he? Phalanx, of course. <laughs> we already have a miserable reputation with these guys. So let's ruin his poster. You give Euronymous a clown nose, huge floppy shoes and a hat with a rabbit on it. The message is quite clear but you still add the caption God damn clown. And we need to hang up three posters. Let's find the other billboards. Let's just a loop around the town. Stop the poster and ruin Zemeckis' poster. You paste the Reisner campaign poster on the board. In the photo, Johan and Olivia are standing side by side. The picture is fine, but it lacks the dynamic energy of Zemeckis' posters. The contest will not be an easy one. Are there any other announcements? No. Pierre and Juan. Uh, set up camp, trader, let's quickly check him out. I don't like you. <laughs> well, <laughs> we're not looking to buy a well trade with him. Basically a drug dealer, he does have a lot of cash on him. <laughs> Unsurprisingly. Is there anything we want to sell? Hmm. 
Maybe the skull. Deafness plus two is great, but fortune minus four. This skull is cursed. This can be useful, even though muscle minus one. We can it. We can use it to temporarily increase encumbrance by forty. Psyche plus one. We don't have anybody in the team that uses psyche and. Psionics. Let's get rid of this cursed skull. Good luck with it. And the final billboard. Paste up the poster and ruin the Magasis poster. Noticed the posters of the main competitor, Zemeckis. If you spoil his posters, it's unlikely to have a positive effect on his popularity. Now we made him look unsightly and pitiful. Alright. Back to the race nurse. At least this place looks like a town. You think I can have a shower here? Well, possibly. I assume this is not the only thing the Erasers want from us before they give us the Maelstrom Beacons. That would be too easy. Olivia pushes back her curls with one hand. Are you here for business or... If anything, I don't mind talking. I just want to get everything done. A lot of work, you see. We have put up the posters. This news visibly cheers, Mrs. Raisner. Okay, we have to win this election. The point isn't to remain in power, but to preserve all the good that's left in Carmine Heights. She looks at her husband again, immersed in studying his own records. My husband lives for grand projects and ideas. But you can't spend all your time planning ahead. Sometimes you have to look around and... Oh! I almost forgot Johan has a task for you. Go talk to him. What a surprise. Did we already ask about Zemeckis' political program? Not sure. Mrs. Raisner purses her lips and nods, dissatisfied. I'm aware. Many of his ideas were stolen from us, and the ones that weren't sound downright alarming. Zemeckis is pushing the idea of a secure life in Carmine Heights, under Feilheim's protection. But it's already safe here. We don't need to pay for security with our civil rights and personal freedoms. Very good. I agree. I think we did ask about the Raisner's political agenda, but... She grows animated. We have an extensive program of reforms. In short, we want to turn Carmine Heights face to the world, grow more Atlas, attract trade, and start our own caravan service. This will both increase our income and accelerate research. Not only Johan's projects, but also the others, which are no less important. Shipman is working on making the desert soil arable, and I am... Um, well, I want to solve the infertility problem. This work takes a lot of money. She frowns, thoughtful. All right. Sounds good to me. So, Johan probably 
in his lab or study. Johan is finding it hard to drag himself away from his notes. Ah, it's you again. Sorry, I got a lot on my plate. I would certainly chat otherwise. Although, if you're here regarding our common cause, I'm listening. He looks at you expectantly. The posters have been posted. Johan blinks sleepily, still captivated by his own thoughts. Posters? Oh yeah, posters. Great. Did I tell you about the isosuit? That's my number one priority right now, and I could use your help. So what's an ISO suit? Raisner leafs through the notebook. When he finds the page he's looking for, he shows you a vague diagram. This is special gear based on a servo shell design. A suit that would theoretically preserve the operator's life when passing the dome's perimeter. All right. Sounds interesting. How's the research? Progressing. The blue is noticeably morose. Not successful, to be honest. I have a partly finished prototype based on my drawings, but the group working on it is undergoing a crisis. They can't decide on some of the design features. So, what needs to be done? He cheers up. Go to the lab and talk to Robin Helworth and Toto Gurkiv. They have two hypotheses that each require material for testing. I expect you to help them acquire what they need. All right then, we are ready to tackle this problem as well. He nods reassuringly. This will be a big help to me. Take a look at the isosuit prototype and talk to Robin and Toter in the lab. Now, excuse me, but I have to return to my calculations. Johan leans over his notebook, mumbling inaudibly. Right, two engineers under the patronage of Johan Reisner are developing an isosuit, a device for leaving the bounds of the dome. Several rare parts are required to complete the prototype. Talk to the creators of the suit to find out exactly how you can help in the lab. Science facility, lab. The isosuit lab, right. And hotel and farms. And residences, all right. Let's get to the isosuit lab. Talk to Robin and Todor. I should shoot prototype. <laughs> Good day. A plump girl with a cigarette extends her hand. Robin Hellward. And this mama's boy is Todor. She gives the skinny guy next to her a jab in the side. You're probably going to ask who are these two idiots and what are we doing here? So I'll tell you we're making an ISO suit, a piece that according to the plan will allow us to exit the dome and survive. There she is, and she gestures to a device that looks a lot like a servo shell. So how's the work on the isosuit going? So, so, we are a bit stuck right now. If I had been in charge of this product, we would have put together a new version in a couple of days. 
So why isn't it finished yet? It's complicated. We have a disagreement here about the prototype. We're missing something. We need to test a hypothesis. Say that Johan asked you to help with the ISO suit. Okay then, listen, there's an item in the relics registry that generates a very dense field under current. It's called an icebreaker, third class of rarity. The phalanx traders were asking an ungodly price for it. It's probably still in their warehouse. The warehouse of the phalanx traders. All right. Here's my idea, install it in an ISO suit and set it up to generate directional radiation in a cone. Whether my plan works or not, I can't say, but I'm gonna need this icebreaker. Alright, Todor wedges in. I'm telling you again, it won't work. You can't make the icebreaker stable nor controllable. We have to use proven materials and magnetic fields. My money is on the shielite fiber used to sh shield the cargo pots. Proven magnetic field, blah blah blah. I'm not planning on taking it apart, wise guy. I intend to use only known properties. But if you insist, then go fetch this damp fiber along with the icebreaker. Later. project of making the ice suit has stalled. Robin and Todor lack some materials. A relic called the icebreaker. Can be obtained from the phalanx warehouse. Does that mean we need to travel to the phalanx base? I guess so. At the shielite fiber. It's very difficult to find this material, but it was once used in cargo capsules. They say one such capsule is still lying somewhere in Junktown. <laughs> right? So, massive trips ahead. The failing space is relatively close by. Or not as far as Junktown. Still, this is not easily done. Oh, this is going to take some time. It would be nice if we can get a car with all that traveling ahead of us. There are several cars that seem to be in working condition. Good day. The neat uniform gives away a role in engineering, a high ranking profession in Carmine Heights, Yoko Fikio Power Supply Service. Welcome and my condolences. He explains with a frown. Have you seen our mess yet? Everybody is preparing for the elections, arguments, noise, ruckus all over. Undoubtedly, Johan is right. Elections are the foundation of a democracy, but allowing Zemeckis. Regina would be surprised if she heard. I don't think this is a good move by Reisner. Zemeckis is too cunning. 
and the way he had in promoting himself, he put up posters all over the city. Yeah, and we defaced them. See you later. Can we get... Where was the other car? Right near the Raisner residence. It's probably their car. Or maybe Lars von Blau. A heavy set old guard with an indifferent expression is standing at his post. He is holding a rumpled cup of coffee from which he sips noisily. Lars von Blau. Hello again. Stop, this is the racer's house. You don't do that, there's no need for this, whatever it is you're doing here. Looks like he wants you to leave. What's it like to work as a security guard? Well, it's, you know, it's, it's like, well, you get what I'm trying to say here. What about Johan Reisner? Well, yeah, he is, you know, just a man. And Olivia Reisner. Well, she's so, well, you know, she's all dead. He he he. Move away. Yeah, go on then. Can we take your car? <laughs> it's a nice luxury sedan. With a great interior and a smooth ride too. Can we borrow your car, Olivia, maybe? Olivia pushes back her curls with one hand. Are you here for business, or...? If anything, I don't mind talking. I just want to get everything done. A lot of work, you see. Right. It's not an option. That leaves us with no other means of transportation but walking to the Phalanx base and getting the relic. Let's maybe not try to steal a vehicle. The problem with Phalanx is we have a miserable reputation. Minus 11. So Phalanx Base, 16 hours, 50 kilometer walk. Reputation change. Why? Minus five with phalanx. 
Maybe they discovered the posters we ruined. That's kind of strange, but we'll check it out later. An eternal twilight seems to hang over these swamps. Thick vapor clouds, the light and glimmering greenish sparks remind you of fireflies. An unidentifiable sound breaks the marsh's dead silence. And we see several figures moving among the reeds. Look through the binoculars. Well, we can't see much because of the fog. Nevertheless, the moving shadows in the reeds become a bit clearer. Roaches. Yeah, let's try to pass by and continue on our way. Stop, uh, set up camp. Rest until morning. Do we need to eat? Cut you some food. Let's get a balanced ready meal. Drink some water. The road led you to the phalanx base, a huge fortress towering on a rock. It is home to former prisoners and soldiers, entrepreneurs, mercenaries and adventurers. A man named Hieronymus Zemeckis is in charge of this place. So why did our, <laughs> yes, rumor that it was you who spoiled Hieronymus Maxis election posters reach the phalanx mercenaries minus 16. So I don't think they will uh, let us take the what was it? Relic we need. That's highly unlikely. Quite a large base these guys have. Are we actually allowed to enter? An unusually cultured looking phalanx man watches you through the smoke glass of his, of his visor. So how do you like serving in this part of the dome? Well as a former white, alright, I can tell you it's kind of boring here. Almost everything has been studied or explored. But in the south there's real terra incognita. My sister was down there, she told me about unprecedented anomalies, machines of the forefathers and other astonishing things. If you ever sent an expedition to the south, I'll definitely sign up. See ya! Our propaganda insists that phalangists live in tents and sleep on the bare ground, hugging their guns. Although, the part about weapon is probably true. Yeah. I guess so. 
Let's get some Kronos points. I think we need to be careful in here. <laughs> it's probably impossible to steal the relic or get the relic. Right. Let's think about what to do next. That's something for the next episode, I guess. Make a cut here. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.